Jim Rogers presents his analysis of the latest movements in stocks, gold, and commodities. He argues that when it comes to the Ukraine conflict, we should expect to see a positive development within a few weeks and that could cause a rally in stocks. At the Freedom Fest 2022 conference in Las Vegas, she spoke with Kitco News Editor-in-Chief and lead host Michelle McCory. Listen to the full podcast to understand what's going on the U.S. debt and market, and are we heading a serious recession? Please follow us on YouTube and open your notifications for further podcasts. Enjoy. Michelle, I make a lot of mistakes, so I'm glad I heard something <laughs> right, but I, have, I know I've made many mistakes. Well, it's good to see you, but you are the bearer of bad news, saying that the situation for U.S. equities is about to get a lot worse. How much worse? Well, what, what I have said is we're going to have more bear markets. We've always had bear markets. Now, in Washington, they say, no, we're not. Everything is okay now. No more bear market. If you believe them, don't listen to me. But I know more bear markets are coming. And what I have said is the next one is going to be the worst in my lifetime. Maybe we're in the minute now. I, I don't know. You should watch Kitco News to find out. 2008, we had a problem of too much debt. Michelle, since 2008, the debt Oh my God, look out the window, the debt is skyrocketing everywhere. So the next bear market has to be horrible. Well, assuming we're in one right now, and we know that the S&P 500 is already down 20%, so sure looks like we are. The ones that you have referred to as being the worst in your lifetime, the S&P fell by at least 50%. So by that calculation, we still have at least another 30% to go down here. But before this bear market is over, of course, many stocks are going to go down 70, 80, 90%. That's the way bear markets work. No, of course that's going to happen. I just don't know when it is. Watch Kitco News. They will tell you. <laughs> well, that's why we have you on Kitco News. Oh, oh. So it's going to be worse because we have even more debt in the system. First of all, it's been 13 years since we've had big problems. And that's the longest in American history could go for 30 years, who knows, who knows, but it's already overdue on a historic basis. And it's very, very expensive. And it always goes down a lot when it goes down. We have very high valuations. We have staggering debt. We have a lot of new investors coming in. Michelle, it's not my first rodeo. I've seen this movie, I know how it works. They're all gonna lose a lot of money. I hope I'm not one of them. Well, Jim, I'm not sure Washington disputes that we're in a bear market. Hard to dispute that when the S&P 500 is down 20%. So by technical definition, we're in a bear market. But I do get your point that many in Washington aren't acknowledging that we're in a recession. Although we may very well already be in one, second quarter GDP estimates expected to be negative. So then again, by the technical definition, two quarters of negative growth, we are in a recession. But to your point, Many in Washington haven't quite come to terms with that or admitted that. But what is your outlook at large, especially as the Fed tightens more aggressively? I wish I could quote you all of the time. Washington has said we're not in a recession when we were. They didn't even know it, that the recession had started. And likewise, central bank people. Uh, my outlook is that if we have peace, if something... There's a lot of pessimism around right now, huge amounts of pessimism. Whenever there's a lot of pessimism, it often leads to a rally. If something happens in Ukraine, there'll be a big rally. Oil will go down, grains will go down, stocks and everything will go up for a while. I don't know what will cause the rally, but we're probably going to have a big rally. That rally is, I hope I'm smart enough to sell that rally, because that's probably the last big rally. It could be a very big rally but that's probably the last time. And that would or could be triggered by a resolution to the conflict in the war in Ukraine, is, is what you could see as the possible trigger for a rally. I have no, the, the obvious for me would be if something happens in Ukraine. I have no idea. I don't have any inside information, but if something happens, that would cause a big rally. But you're saying we're currently in a bear market, but not necessarily the one that you anticipate will be the worst in your lifetime? When it's the worst in my lifetime, you'll know it. You it's won't. not now? <laughs> it's, we're not in the middle of oh, it now? No, this is not the worst bear market in my life. This is nothing. This is nothing. Oh my gosh. 
You should have, I have seen some astonishing bear markets, not just in the U.S., all over the world. But you don't think that we're in the beginning of the worst bear market okay, of your if lifetime? If you want to define it that way, yes. But if there were peace, we might make new highs. Okay. But still, that would not negate the bear market. All right. So we're in a bear market. We could still see a rally on positive diplomatic developments out of Russia, Ukraine. But ultimately, we're still owed another huge bear market worse than anything we've seen before, even if it's not this one, if I may so recap. How can it not be a horrible bear market? You know what the debt has happened? I mean, the U.S. has increased its debt by several times since 2009. Japan, oh my God, they can't even count the debt in Japan. Many countries in the world, the debt just goes higher and higher and higher. 2008 was because of too much debt. It's much worse now. Well, it's, uh, apologies for the wobbly table here, Jim. It's uh, much like the economy. It's wobbly like the economy. So you were correct that you said that this unprecedented fiscal and monetary stimulus was going to cause inflation. You said that uh, in March of 2021 when you were on the show. Now we've hit 9.1%, a new high over the last 40 years. What is it going to take to tame this inflation? To fix it? Well, no, they not. They don't know how to fix it. They, the only thing, Michelle, in two thousand, sorry, in nineteen eighty, interest rates on Treasury bills, U.S. Treasury bills, were over twenty percent. That's not a typo. Twenty percent. It cured inflation. It solved the problem finally. No, because we've made so many mistakes this time around. Interest rates will have to go very, very high. We will have a serious recession. Many people will go bankrupt. We're going to have a lot of problems. There's no other way to solve the problem. Other than to have double-digit Volcker-esque type of interest rate hikes. Well, we could have, we have a choice. We either raise interest rates a lot and have a lot of pain, or we let it, people continue to print money and have horrible, horrible inflation and cause even more pain. There's not much, not many choices. Well, we've had uh, the likes of Art Laffer and Stephen Moore on the show, and they're saying that if you take a supply side economic approach and you cut taxes, for example, that we could get out of the situation without a recession, or certainly not one as ugly as would need to be to tame interest rates by just increasing to tame inflation by just increasing interest rates. I am all for cutting taxes. It's always better for any country, any economy. The fewer taxes, the better. Fine, if, if, our, if Steve thinks they can pull that off, by all means. But if we cut taxes, we're gonna have big push into the economy. But while these guys are printing money, it's just gonna make inflation worse. We, I don't know how we solve the problem of too much inflation without pain. Right. Well, and there is a call for even more stimulus by the Biden administration. Democrats wanting to get through a watered down version of the Build Back Better plan. So that certainly is going to perhaps uh, or definitely pour more gasoline on, onto the fire there. So, Jim, what can an investor do in this environment? Well, first of all, investors should only invest in what they themselves know a lot about. They shouldn't listen to hot tips on TV, even on Kitco News. That's a terrible way to invest. Stay with what you know. I can tell you some of the things I'm doing. When you have inflation, if you own the things that go up in price, you make money. I mean, agricultural goods are going to go higher before this is over. Energy will go higher before it's over. Everything will go higher before it's over. Real goods. If you own those kind of things, you will do well. If you know how to sell short, and you can sell short many things, many stocks, not just in America, all over the world, and make a lot of money. If you don't know how to do either of those, put your money in the bank and wait. It's better to earn 1% per year than to lose 20% per year, and bear markets lead to big losses. Can you stay in cash in such an inflationary environment? Sure, the interest rates will go high enough. One thing about interest rates in inflation, they will eventually go high enough to offset the effects of inflation. 